Three Righteous Mamas is a podcast brought to you by The Signal. We are on a mission to transform our country. We tell the stories that matter, celebrate the power and hope of pissed off mamas who are building a better future for all of our children. Hi, I'm Muna Husseini. And I'm Christina Sansun Ramirez. And I'm Martha Pinkoffs. And welcome to our chat today, y'all. I got to point out my lovely shirt. Just wanted Gorgeous. to say that so cute. Uh, we hope that, that y'all can get your merch too. Check it out on our store. Because right Mother's now. Day is right around the corner. And what better gift to get them? Store.3brightestmamas.com and order your gear. So I have missed y'all. I know I've been gone for a minute. Mona, we miss you when you're not here. I know. Tell everyone where you've been. We've missed you a lot. We've been like telling people where you are, but we want, you know, you, you catch us all up. Yeah. So um, Ramadan, which is the most holiest month in the Islamic calendar, started around May 12th. And it's where we don't eat or drink during daylight hours. And I'm still working full time and taking care of kids. And then we do some extra pairs in the evening and night. And that's probably the simplest version of it. But uh, just for my sanity and to, to stay married, I <laughs> dropped everything <laughs> that was a little bit extra so I could make it through the month. So thank you all for giving me that grace and space. Yeah, no, we were, we were totally fine. I have heard that on Ramadan at the evening, you all eat the most amazing food and meals. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> is there a point in being humble right now? No, no. No, I want to know what, like, you got to eat that I want to try next year. My brother for a year tried, uh, because he has many friends that are Muslim, uh, observed Ramadan. And he just told me, like, the food was amazing because he'd go over to his friend's houses that were um, Ethiopian. Ah, so... uh... So I will start by saying that, yes, there are some people that binge and super pig out when it's time to break their fast, but you're technically just supposed to eat a little bit because Ramadan's not just about gorging yourself and then denying yourself during the day. Uh, So I'm from, my family's from Hyderabad in India, and we have specific dishes that, yes, we make them all year round, but they're things that we especially look forward to during Ramadan. And so in my house, We make egg rolls or samosas, but like in an Indian way. So we have Mm. different fillers, but um, I made a whole bunch this year because I don't have time to like make them every day and fry them, but made them ahead of time and froze them and froze them. See, I'm tired. We freeze them (laughs) and then pull out a few and fry, uh, fry them up. And then we make fruit salad. So it's like all these different fruits and you just cut them up and it's a fruit salad. And the the thing that makes it really desi or Indian is that we put fruit jot in it. And my best friend from middle school is always like, y'all put spices in everything, even fruits. (laughs) (laughs) But I think it's like the Indian version of uh, what is it? Like, I think a lot of uh, chamoy, what do you call it? It's like chamoy. Oh yeah. But Mexicans, we eat like chile, limon, salt. Yeah. So it's kind of like, sorry, is lemon. It makes everything better. Kind of like that, but different. Um, my kids hate it because they think it smells like fart. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but I like it. <laughs> Maybe I didn't eat it when I was younger. Am I making this sound appetizing? <laughs> no, I mean, the, the it does sound good. And so what is the purpose of like the religious purpose of not eating and drinking all day? Like, what are you trying to observe or? Yeah, so um, first of all, it is a commandment in the Quran too fast. And it is something that uh, Abrahamic faiths have in common, Christianity and Judaism also fast. Um, One of the reasons is this month is the month that our holy book was revealed in. And so we celebrate that and commemorate that. But um, it's basically starving your body to feed your soul. Mm. So you're not eating and drinking all day actually uh, as an adult or a grown up or whatever you want to call it you're also not supposed to have sex or smoke or anything that's that makes you mortal if you will mm-hmm. um and the first thing that's amazing about it is the abstention of doing things unless you tell people nobody knows you're fasting and so it is a really sincere act of worship because um so many things we do are visible mm-hmm. and you can do for your pride or your arrogance and in this sense like no one knows And so your worship is all like focused inward. Mm. 
And then second, it's think of it as a spiritual boot camp of, you know, we're supposed to pray five times a day anyways, but it's also for your character because you have to maintain patience. Like you can't just be like yelling at your kids and fighting with your spouse. Like you have to like focus on your humility and, and being kind to one another. And um, we're, we give a lot of charity during the month and uh, you're supposed to do a lot more good deeds because you get more reward. Mm -hmm. And so like, if you can do all these things when you're not eating and drinking, and, and by the way, we're, we're supposed to do extra prayers at night and in the middle of the night. And so you're also not sleeping. Oh, wow. This wow. Is sustained over a month. And so if you can do it for a month, why the heck can't you do it all year long? Right. Oh, cool. And, and so that's really what it's about. It's just like sharpening your discipline and sharpening your spirituality. We're also supposed to read a lot of Quran and, and just connect with our deen a little bit more. A lot of people will say, oh, well, we fast because, you know, we want to have empathy with the poor. And it, it kind of makes me scratch my head because I'm like, guess what? Poor people have to fast, too. So who are they having empathy with? <laughs> because if they already didn't have food, like... I don't know, but it's just, so for me, it's, it's much more about the spirituality and, and connection. And I think on the back end, it's a huge time of community as well. A little yeah. hard during COVID, but, mm -hmm. um, it's a great time just to like get together and be celebrating with our community. And I think people are doing it virtually. That sounds, I, I think it sounds really beautiful. And I love the spiritual discipline of like, having it be a thing that you commit yourself to every year and know that it's coming and know what your body feels like when you're doing it and know at this point what it feels like to get through it has to feel um like familiar in some way of like being almost to the end um or the halfway through mark and all of that I mean I just I think that's I love it I admire that you're doing that and I like, how do you, how do you not drink water all day? You know, it's, it's kind in of weird. living in Texas. Yeah. I'm lucky that I'm generally indoors and air conditioned. There are people who like work outdoors and it must be very, very difficult for them. Yeah. But it's, it's actually something this month is something I look forward to. And I'm really excited for like, even as a kid, like little kids will be like, mommy, mommy, can I, can I fast? And we'll let them do like this. Sure. Fast until noon, <laughs> like just to get them excited about it. And I remember, I remember once, I think I was seven or eight and I had wanted to fast and my parents had said, sure. But then I felt hungry and I couldn't make it through the day. And so I took like a box of Fruit Loops to my room and I was like stuffing my face full of Fruit Loops. And like, I had so many Fruit Loops in my mouth, like I couldn't even close it. And then my brother came in and I was like, ah, ah. <laughs> He's like, ah, and he yelled. And I didn't, I didn't want to like disappoint anyone that I couldn't make it through the day because I'd been so excited. And obviously they didn't care. And it's like a fun story we can tell now, but like, Yes, it's hard for some people, but for a lot of folks, it's a time of excitement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure so it's like people coming together, family, um, also just a global holiday mm -hmm. that's being celebrated by like what a billion people right now around the world. Yeah. Like, isn't that amazing to be connected yeah. to so many folks doing the same practice? Um, you know, it makes me think about like just you educating me and Martha and our listeners about Ramadan that don't, don't already know um, so much. It makes me think, you know, we always introduce ourselves to our guests. Like I'm the Latino one, I'm the Muslim and I'm the queer one. And, you know, we were laughing earlier about kind of the stereotypes that people talk about each one of us. Um, and, I, you know, I'm just wondering, you know, for you, Muna, like, what are this, you know, sometimes people ask innocently, right, from a place of like, innocent ignorance about us. And sometimes the, the stereotypes or questions are more grounded and rooted in like, a meanness. But, um, you know, what are the what are the ones that like, make you laugh, the ones that you get pretty consistently? I'm like, we're wondering for all of you. Oh, well, how much time do we have? We could be here for a while. Um, this is also our therapy session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. Um, I, I travel a lot for work and I 
I remember being at the airport one time and, you know, I wear my scarf, so I'm identifiable as Muslim. And, and somebody came up to me and sat down and was like, what are you doing here? And I was like, getting on a plane. <laughs> like, why are you asking? And, you know, we'll just leave the conversation at that because that's what you need to know. There was a lot of um, other insulting things that happened in that conversation. But the, the gentleman's point was like, aren't you supposed to be home barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen? Mm. And I was just shocked um, because, you know, I... I work in tech and I've been working in tech for 20 years. And I just thought, you know, I'm sure my husband would be really happy <laughs> if that stereotype was true. Cause I'd just be at home taking care of him. But um, yeah, no, I'm, you know, and then I proceeded to tell him I'm, I'm an executive at a company and like, this is what I do. And actually my husband loves that I do this. And I have my career because my husband's so dang supportive and he just did not know what to do with himself. And then that also continued into like, but you're not allowed to wear pants. And I was like, just stop talking, like stop because you're just, you don't know what's coming out of your mouth. But yeah, lots of fun ones like that. Um, you you all must have fun ones that you get too, right? I just, I mean, yes, fun, some, some of them are fun. Some of them are a little bit, it Weird. depends on the spirit of the question. That's right. A lot of times it really just depends on the spirit of the question, but often, um, one of the questions that makes me go, oh my God, really? Is um, when we get asked who's, who's, well, then who's the man in the relationship? And I'm <laughs> like, well, the whole point is that there isn't a dude in the we relationship. We chose not to have <laughs> one in here. Oh, so, I'll know what to tell you. Yeah, I kind of dress like a tomboy, but, uh, but I'm a woman. And I don't know. It's just that one. That one can feel a little bit funny sometimes, but, but for the most part, I think people are so steeped in, well, but the man does this and the woman does this. So who stays home and who does the dishes and who fixes the garage when it's broken? And it's like, you know, we bust those stereotypes all the time. You know what I was just, I don't know why this, it makes me laugh. So my, I have several, uh, two of my best friends are lesbians and have like babies. And I remember when my friend Carla's baby was born and going over to see baby. And I, and I just like, I don't know how to brain fart. And I was like, who do you think she looks more like? <laughs> and they both looked at me like I was crazy. And I was like, that's how queer positive I am. I didn't even that's recognize right. that there was a man needed. In this that's right. <laughs> All I gotta say is I wish more people figured out gender roles at home, like queer families, because the person who wants to do the dishes should do the dishes. And the person who is best suited to fix the garage should fix the garage. But guess exactly. what? The dishes still get done and the garage mm -hmm. still gets fixed. And it's just, it does. It's, it's aspirational for me. Yeah. Thanks. I think we've got, we, we do have a little bit of a leg up there because it's like, <laughs> there is no definition. You get to find it. Mm -hmm. So I'm for that. How about you, Christina? Um, well, I feel like there's several. So I think the one that has always confused me since I was a child is that um, Mexicans are considered to be lazy while simultaneously working so hard that they'll steal your job. Like it just confuses me and perplexes me. Um and I remember like being in middle school for the, and like hearing for the first time, like the lazy Mexican stereotype and just being like totally baffled by it. Um, and like, where does this come from? And then it's funny because I literally, there's a study that came out. Uh, there's an international study of like, which countries work the most hours, which people work the most hours and consistently Mexico rates, like number one, number of hours that the citizens of any country work. And so I'm just like, I don't get where the stereotype comes from, but that's one of the ones I don't get asked, like, you know, why are Mexicans lazy, but I've heard it brought up and it's definitely like in the water, as far as if you watch Fox news, it's, um, over there. Um, but I do get asked a lot about like Latinos being immigrants. Mm -hmm. And it is true that there are a lot of Latinos that are immigrants, but it's also really weird, especially in Texas, when everyone assumes that if you're Latino, you're an immigrant because uh, there are uh, Mexican Americans, Tejanos, were here before Texas and the United States even existed. Right. And so it's a really strange dynamic to both like straddle a uh, new foreign born identity with the idea for people that 
uh, we were here before this nation was even constructed. So that's also an interesting uh, like stereotype to break. Um, yeah, it's I was so, even asked. Sorry, it's I was so the last. Interesting, kind of a consistent theme, Christina, is that um, you can't be Muslim and American at the same time because Muslims mm -hmm. don't believe in the Constitution. And, you know, we're here to hate, wage holy war on everyone. And uh, it's uh, ridiculous. And Muna's speaking of stereotypes right now. Yeah. <laughs> right. To be clear, if listeners weren't clear. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous because part of our religious law is that you have to follow the laws of the land you live in. Mm. Period. Period. And that's P -E -R -I -O -D -T, period. That's right. <laughs> um, and so it's, it's just a little silly to me that there's all these like anti-Sharia laws because it's like you you want us to not follow the religion of the land like I'm confused like what is it and so it's just fear mongering and just a little ridiculous um and it it also is a little hypocritical in the sense that uh I think Catholicism Judaism like Protestant is like all these religions are all foreign religions and so yeah, should those yeah. religions not be That's following right. their laws either? Like, you know, um, but yeah, that one, that one always, always makes me laugh. Yeah. I'm sure we get asked a million questions. Martha, what are the other ones that like, you know, okay. So for the, for lesbians, there's a big stereotype that we are man haters. And I just think it's a very important clarifying point that not wanting to do it to a man does not mean that you hate a man. <laughs> Like I have dudes that I love and that are some of my closest friends. I am raising a son. You know, I, um, I really, I, I don't hate dudes. I just don't want to do it to them. And when you came out to your family, do you remember like some of the, like, is there some of the innocent questions that I'm sure you get asked? Oh God, there were lots of, you know, yeah, it was, it was. Because Muna and I don't like never face the experience of like yeah. our family asking us these questions. You know? Well, my, so one, I, I got so many letters from family members and I actually used to carry them around in my glove box, which was a terrible idea. But one of the letters was from my brother and it, it talked about the quality of people that I would be assigning myself to by being a, queer woman in the world and it was so wrong like it was just it was so wrong in every way the assumption that um about the the quality of people that 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 would be my people and they are my people they are my family they are my mm -hmm. my people that hold me up and and there is such a beauty and uh like a there's a toughness in the queer community that comes from, from that experience happening over and over again, times a thousand times, you know, whatever, but those little rejections of, from family for being different, those are super painful, but yeah. they make a really gorgeous people on the other end. So stuff like that. And it's just, it was, it was so wrong and I don't know where he got the information from um but I just remember how it was back when like we were all younger like mm -hmm. this the like we're talking about the stereotypes or questions you get but so many of them have actually been broken for us uh, too. I do like, agree over the yeah. years like I remember that it used to be a common thought that if you were queer it was because you had been uh, sexually assaulted sexually assaulted child, that's one that I was asked uh, yeah. I've been asked that actually like probably 12 times yeah I was um, not sexually assaulted as a child. Yeah. And, you know, like, you know, I told that beautiful story of how my mom sat us down and said, like, if there's anything that, you know, if you're ever gay, like, I'm going to love you forever. And you're welcome to be who you are in a different episode. But my mom definitely taught us that, like, you know, for a time period when she had that information, too, because it's other information that's shared with people, right? Like, mm -hmm. that's part of the stereotypes is they get shared around and people totally. think don't know what's true and what's false. Mm -hmm. And so even though for me, like sometimes for me, the intent of how someone asks something really matters Yeah, because I've been asked definitely questions about like, 
culturally Mexicans and women and asked Mm -hmm. questions about like, you know, and Martha and I've talked about this, aren't most Latinos um, homophobic, even though Latinos are disproportionately in the youngest age bracket queer. Um, And like, for me, when someone asks me, even if it's a question that's not it could be hurtful. I appreciate when they ask me when it's not to be hurtful. They just yeah. really want to know and they don't know where to go get the information. Yeah. So I think it's like a line because some people don't want to do that. But for me, they don't want to be people's teachers because it can be hurtful. But I wonder mm-hmm. how you all feel about it. For me, I feel like oftentimes it's an opportunity to break through to someone, even though it's hard. I think it can be. I have to say that I am not always up for it. Like I... I feel like I'm at a place where sometimes, and I think intent is, is king in all of these situations, but like when somebody comes to me and wants to talk about their story of like having been a homophobe and then not being a homophobe anymore, and they're looking for my congratulations on that. I'm not, I don't really love having to be bear witness to, to that journey. Um, because it doesn't feel like there's a real exchange there. It, it feels like there's, there is a seeking of, oh, you did such a good job. Way to not be a homophobe. And that I, I wear out on that one. But if, if somebody wants to be in conversation about, you know, some, some human stuff, like some of the humanity of what my experience has been, because it is only one experience of the queer story. Mm -hmm. I'm always happy to talk about that. Yeah, I would agree, Christina, with what you said, and Martha, what you said, intention makes a huge difference, because I can tell off the bat whether someone is being an a-hole or someone is genuinely curious. Mm -hmm. They can ask the exact same question, their tone of voice and their sincerity or lack of will show up really quick. And, um, you know, a couple things is the, as Martha said, sometimes I don't have the capacity either, depending on what's going on in the world, um, to be a font of information. We live in a time where information is available. And so then it makes me wonder, like, what's the person trying to accomplish? Like, Mm -hmm. how well do you know the person you're asking? Like, do you even have a relationship there? Are you just being lazy and like asking them because they happen to be there? And then also like, have you done any of your own work to do research, right? Because if you've done some work and you're asking like, you know, I read about this, I had a question about this or this, that's always a much better conversation to have than like, Mm -hmm. oh, you happen to be here and it's convenient for me. Therefore, I'm going to pick your brain because I'm bored or whatever. Um, because some of these conversations can re-traumatize um, the person in question. Like I, I had a coworker once, like I had a flat tire and I was like stuck at home and my husband couldn't come pick me up. And so I called my coworker because I knew he had to go by my house to get to work. So I called him and I was like, hey, can you pick me up? It's on your way. I know this is the time. And he was like, sure, sure. And then, but I felt like something was weird and he hung up and he called me back in five minutes and he was like, listen, I don't. I don't mean to be mean, but I'm really scared. Like if I pick you up from work, is your husband going to kill me because and kill you? Because like he was talking about honor killings and his wife had seen some like movie. Oh my God. Some, some woman and her daughter and like this honor killing, or I'm not even sure what the details were, but I was just so in shock. Right. But I knew he was like, concerned for me and like he didn't want to do something wrong and like I could tell that he was so like I'm really sorry I even have to ask the question because this feels wrong but like that's truly what he believed and so like even though I I got it like he didn't want me to get hurt like it still hurt me that like of course yeah somebody could think that (laughs) yeah but I think this is someone I work with every day for like a year I think I think the other thing is that like there's just so little I think there's more and more like stuff on queer folks I think there's more and more stuff on Latinos there's not very much on Muslim folks like pop culture is how people learn about different Mm -hmm. cultures because we do live in a really segregated um society and country and like when you don't see those images and all you get are like the Muslim stories of honor killings and like uh and being told over and over again about like 
uh, Muslims are supposedly all terrorists. And you're told over and over again that Latinos are all immigrants and criminals and rapists by like our highest elected leaders. Like, you know, I go back and forth between like, I get annoyed and angry at the stereotypes. And then I also feel like, well, if someone asks me a question and obviously I'm not the spokesperson of all Latinos everywhere, because I'm also, you know, half white myself. Um, but like <laughs> if someone asks me a question and they ask me with like good intention, even if the question is like off-putting, yeah. I do personally feel like a responsibility to like break through because yeah. maybe I'm the only person that they'll ask and maybe it was mm -hmm. hard for them to ask. Mm -hmm. And like, I think about, I remember a few months back, I texted Muna because I've never been um uh to a mosque to a mosque right like never like i've been in a mosque but i've never like gone to, i don't know if you even call it service i don't know what it's called what is it called Muna? it's all good i understand what you mean well you know like that's like my level of ignorance right like because i've not exposed and so i asked i texted muna and asked like hey would it be okay one day to come to um, your mosque with you. And she didn't text back for like a week. And I was like, oh my God, I totally offended Muna. I feel terrible. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. And Muna like responded a week later. She's like, oops, miss this. Yeah, sure. Whenever, you know, <laughs> and like, I want to come, you know, um, and, but I took it upon myself to ask and I didn't know like what the rules are, what's appropriate or anything yeah. like that. I can't imagine like most faith traditions are like, come on in everybody, you know, but I wanted to ask. And that took a little bit of courage on my part because I just didn't know. And like, I, I want to give people that same grace. I also want to say to folks, like, if you are asking with, uh, without love in your heart and the yeah. seeking of understanding, like I have zero patience for it. Mm -mm. I also find a, like a direct um, allegory to how much alcohol has been consumed because a lot of people want to get drunk and talk about gay sex oh, because okay. like they're nervous to talk about it otherwise and like that's when all of the questions happen and to me I don't drink and like there is that's where it start it can start to get into a disrespectful place well, of course and it's so about like your sex life and not right, about like your life it's not about <laughs> life it's not about the humanity piece so I don't private yeah and I don't yeah. I don't engage those conversations, but like, I do remember right when I came out, I was propositioned so many times by men that I went to college with oh. that were like, Hey, I'll get us a hotel room. You and your girlfriend can come be like, Whoa, so that is what really a level like, of entitlement. So I don't profound. even know what you call that. That's like generous to call it entitlement, Muna. It's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> but they were dead serious. It always just shocks me. And, and yes, I'm using that word entitlement very generously, but it just shocks me what people feel like they can say and do and is owed to them as a basic necessity. I just, I can't remember who, um, I'll have to come up with it later, but they were talking about if you follow the embarrassment, you can measure the level of marginalization of a group by like how much they get embarrassed or like what That's they're so not, not comfortable to do, right? Mm -hmm. um, like I, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. It's like, I can't imagine that was only like one dude that said that no, ever. No, it wasn't. Okay, I wanna know what's the funniest question or weirdest, funniest comment, like not in a bad way, but just like the funniest thing that someone's ever said to you that like just made you like- Die laughing. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll go, I have one, like mine was just funny. Cause I, so, you know, I grew up, my dad's white, he's American. Uh, I grew up mostly all of my life in the United States and we went back to Mexico a lot, but like um, my first language was really English. And I remember being in fifth grade in Ohio or something. And um, you know, I'm light skinned. So people wouldn't know I was Mexican, but I would talk about it and then be like, oh, you're Mexican. And I remember a girl going, oh yeah, I. I, I definitely noticed your accent and I was like, just cracked up laughing. I was like, Hey, I grew up in Ohio. Like, what are you talking about? Do you mean like my upper Arlington suburb? That was my suburb, like my suburban white girl accent. Like, what are you talking about? That one just like made me die laughing. <laughs> I will say this. So it's not, this is, it's more like in the, the, um, 
in the zeitgeist, I don't know, in the commentary about lesbians in general, but like, I mean, I do rock the shit out of some Birkenstocks and I do generally wear really comfortable shoes. Like that's one of the things that I gave up when I came out was uncomfortable shoes. Um, and when I was, when I was younger, my, my, I had family members that used to refer to lesbians as women in comfortable shoes. And so like now that's a pretty legit. nice, that's a pretty a nice woman shine. in comfortable shoes. I'll take it. I will say I went to like a lesbian comedy show and I got like nearly all the jokes. They were super funny, except when they started referring to like the Subaru as the lesbian car. The Subaru, yeah. And I was like, really? Like I had no idea that was a stereotype. And <laughs> I and I've had three and I didn't know and I was like 30 something and I was like I've had so many lesbian friends and I didn't know this joke this is like they like put Mar- left out <laughs> Martina Navratilova was like the sponsor of the Subaru which brought all the lesbians in oh good okay <laughs> um I get asked all the time if I shower with my scarf on and <laughs> Say what? Sorry. Sorry. Oh my god, really? That's so funny. <laughs> All the time. And and I I have to be like, do you shower with your clothes on? Because, <laughs> you know, that's cool. What kind of um, showers do you take? Like washing your hair through it. <laughs> this never comes off. <laughs> Talk about rash. Like one, one big dread underneath. underneath. Yeah, it's one big dread underneath. <laughs> that's actually that's actually why she's been wearing it the whole time. It's just right. like I don't have any on. hair. This is like my good luck. Like, I, I love that that's a question you get. Like all the time, consistently. I love it really? Like I laugh really hard. You get it all the time? All Like, I think people are becoming more educated nowadays. So I think I get it less, but I still get it. It's, it's, it's still probably my number one question that I get. Wow. From grownups and kids. I feel like I'm forgetting some of the questions because now that I live in Texas, there are a lot less questions. When I lived in Ohio, there were so many questions like all the time. And I'm trying to remember them. Are there food related questions? Yeah, there were food related questions. There were like literally like questions if this was back in the nineties, but like, did we, did we ride donkeys everywhere? And I was like, that's like a Texan question. Yeah. Yeah. I have to tell y'all my most favorite story ever. Okay, go do it. I was like in line at the grocery store. Okay. And uh, there was a Muslim lady there. And so like, you've seen sometimes um, women wear a long black thing called a burqa or a baya and mm-hmm. like uh, Saudi women wear it in what I call penguin style very fondly where they take the, you can say like neckline of the abaya cause it's open down the front and they wear it on the top of their head. So it makes them look like a penguin. Mm-hmm. And so she had her face covered and she had a scarf and then then she had the abaya over her head, but it was just really long. So it just makes you look like a penguin. And this little kid was in line and he saw the side of the, he was like, mommy, it's Batman. And he, <laughs> <laughs> he was so, so excited. And he was I, so could, like, I almost fell over <laughs> laughing. <laughs> That's cute. Do kids I, ask? I had to leave because I couldn't hold it in. And I was just like, this. What did, the, it. what did his mom do? I don't know. I left because I couldn't stop laughing so hard. I mean, I was like, <laughs> like, like spitting on myself. I kind of love that as a response. That's like with the innocence of kids, like when they just like break into a stereo, like, it's just like, that's not even a stereo. That's just like fantastic. Like that kid fantastic. must have been super excited. Batman was in the grocery store. Like, what if that's actually how the American people came to see Muslim women? Oh that God, would be, that would be cool. so much better. Superheroes. <laughs> ah. Well, you got to love Marvel because they deal with all the stereotypes. And like, I know that there's like queer Marvel heroes and I think there's even Muslim Marvel heroes now. And uh, I'm sure there's let Latino Marvel yeah. heroes too. So I uh, got to love that they've always been sort of pushing the envelope on that kind of representation. Um, do I do think that those of us on the margins are superheroes. Like, I think that the, the connection it gives us to each other and to like our common humanity is absolutely a superpower. But you know, actually this reminds me of like, I'm wondering, didn't, I think you talked about Martha, like sometimes, uh, I don't remember which one of your kids' friends would be like, is that your dad about yeah. you, right? Oh like, yeah, totally. Yeah. It's you so know? cute. Yeah. And I actually thought it was really sweet. 
Um, but yeah, they were like, hey, River's dad, River's dad, River's dad. And I was looking around and I was like, who the fuck is River's dad? And I was like, oh, it's me. <laughs> he thinks I'm River's dad. Okay, got it. But, I, like, but like, that's just sweet. It is sweet though. Like when we went to your house, um, we came back and I said, Santi, you know, cause he doesn't really, he started to pay attention to like family formation before it was just like, whatever. And then I was like, that was so cool. We went to Martha's house and uh, River um, and Townsy have two moms. Isn't that cool? And he's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. so just like normalizing it a little totally. bit, like explaining it. It takes like two seconds for a kid to be like, uh, yeah, they have two moms. And then it's like, oh yeah, they have two moms. Great. <laughs> and then like forever, that's normal. Yeah. And like, it's, it's so fun because we've been talking to the kids about Ramadan and they're like, okay, so Muna isn't going to be there tonight because she is doing Ramadan and she didn't eat today. And da, 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 da. And so like, it's just, it's fun to make the world bigger. Yeah. So Martha, all I got to say is for those people that wrote you those letters, look at the quality of folks you're around now. That's right. That's right. Okay, That's I, have right. To, I have to tell one more queer positive story about my mom. I think it's hilarious. Is like, my mom was so queer positive when we were young, which like totally I mean, the bust in the myth, bust in bust the in myth, the myth right on there. Mexican moms. That's and right. I remember in high school, I had a boyfriend and I was like, mommy, can he spend the night? His name was Chris, Chris and Christina. How old Wait, how old were you? I was 16. So of course my mom said no. <laughs> and my mom was like, no, he can't spend the night. Um, and I was like, that's sexist. You would let my friend Janine spend the night. And she's like, and I, and I could have sex with her. And she goes, well, you can go ahead and enjoy that because she won't get you pregnant. So I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. My mom. Hilarious. Thanks yes. so much and soon teaching oh, me to be so clear positive good. from when I was little. <laughs> Oh, guys, it's good. Yeah, so I think the rules of thumb are like, you know, it's okay to have questions. Yeah. Do some research on your own. See if you can interweb through Google. Books. And then also like, if you have a question and someone's a friend, like, you know, just ask with love and intention. And yeah, it can be scary mm -hmm. to ask a question sometimes. But if you mm -hmm. ask with love and intention, I think most people will understand. I think so too. And I think if you have questions for us, you can slide into our DMs and we can answer some questions for you. But it's like when, yeah. I'm just glad to Safe learn space. that Muslims don't shower with, uh, <laughs> with, with their, their head coverings on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like myth busting over here on Three Righteous Mamas. Tell you what. Mexicans don't ride donkeys everywhere. Some people do, but most people don't. Uh, Muslim Not all lesbians hate shower. dudes. Yeah, we have educated a whole world right now. So if you have a friend that has a question about Latinas, Mexicans, Muslims, or queer folks, this podcast has answered many for you. And hopefully it can be, this can become an educational tool. I have a final question. Muna, what's for dinner? Oh, my. And can we come now that we're fully vaccinated? <laughs> we're actually outside. <laughs> so, um, so my sister, um, actually made this, uh, Cajun chicken pasta because I think we've been doing a lot of like Indian food. And so she's like, let's do something different. And so it's a copycat of the Cajun chicken pasta from a uh, cheesecake factory. So that oh, hell yeah. we are excited to eat tonight and, um, maybe I'll take a picture and, and post it with like my mug next to it. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. We need to see your face more. I'll look forward to it. I'll, I'll make some treats and drop them off. The other thing I was gonna say is a lot of Indian treats for, for those of y'all who are gluten-free are really good because they're made out of like chickpea flour. Chickpea flour. Mm -hmm. And then you can get like that crunch in your life with mm -hmm. and keep your tummy happy. Um, so I just wanted to, to, to pop that as well. Cause we have like pakoras and pajia and like a whole bunch of other amazing fried stuff and there's no flour involved and, yeah. and they taste really good. They do taste really and good. And I'm definitely sure three righteous mamas can do a post explaining a little bit more about Ramadan mm -hmm. for folks and things that they, um, wh where they can learn more. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, you know, just to round it all out, um, 
I actually do try to answer every question I get, whether I'm in the mood or not, because I would rather somebody ask me mm. and get a real answer than ask someone or read a wrong source on the internet. Cause, or let's be honest, listen to Fox news mm -hmm. um, yeah. because there's a lot of bad information out there. And so I think that offer that Christina and Martha put out there about asking us questions is fully open and welcomed. Um, and we, we love being in conversations with y'all. So, so keep it coming. <laughs>